Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Magnus, and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. Now, if you recognize that planet, you will know that it is Moho, and you will ask why are we orbiting Moho? Well, we were orbiting Moho before. Here we have Wilman Kerman, you've all come to know Wilman and his four twins. They're not twins, I guess, if there are four of them, but nonetheless, you've come to know him very well. And this is our really badly designed <laughs> ship with a poodle engine which completely ran out of fuel in orbit around Moho. It can land on Moho, but it's not really a landing so much as a catastrophe. So, this has been sitting in orbit around, well, quite a large orbit actually around Moho at about six, yeah, 6,000, 6,000 kilometers for quite a while actually. And I decided with all of our missions going to the moons of Jewel and landing rovers everywhere and all of that really awesome stuff, putting satellites up, I thought that we should do something we've never done before today. And one thing that we've never done before is not only go somewhere and then return, we've never even actually gone to the moon and returned before, but I think that we should try to rescue one of our Kerbals. Now, everyone else needs rescuing as well, but Wilman, being stuck in orbit, has a particularly cramped place to live, and I don't feel comfortable leaving Wilman here forever. So I think what we need to do is get into orbit around Moho, rendezvous, and then save Wilman. Well, get him into a ship that actually has fuel, and then bring him back to Kerbin. Now, I don't know how long that's going to take, actually, and I'm a little bit worried about that, because, uh, as you know, Kerbal Space Program tends to take a lot of time. Actually, let's, let's just get out of here and go back to the Space Center. Kerbal Space Program tends to take a lot of time, and because of that, sometimes I have to, like, edit out tons of stuff. But we're gonna try to do our best to make this both interesting and entertaining, since it's going to be going on for a while. I'll edit out stuff as well as... Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. There's our rescue ship. As well as show you all the interesting parts. Now, I didn't record putting this ship into space, mind you, and I apologize for that. But the thing is, this ship, right? This, uh, this ship is... Basically the same thing as our Genesis 2, you just saw the Genesis 2 with Wilman Kerman, except I've done a few things. One, I changed the Poodle engine to a nuclear engine, because that will give us much, much higher efficiency. I added some solar panels on all of the sides, which give us plenty of solar power. In fact, we're not running out at all, even when we're just idling. Hello, Kerman, you are a beautiful planet. Um, yes. And I took the crew member who was Jorley Kerbin, actually, I took a Jorley out of the crew hatch, and I put a, a robotic probe core on top, and then put the parachute on top of that. So basically, this is an unmanned flight that's going to go to... Wow, well, we still have... Why do we... I don't know why we even have that strut there. But anyway, this is going to go to Moho, and it's going to try try mind you try <laughs> it uh it doesn't have rcs actually so i'm a little bit worried about that but uh, <laughs> it's going to try to rendezvous with wilman's ship and then wilman because we don't have any docking ports wilman is actually going to jump out and then make his way towards the ship and get in and then we're going to try to come back so currently we are exiting kerbin space and going into kerbal space so let's go ahead and time warp. Beep. All right, so we are now outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Let's see where our... Yeah, so we get pretty, pretty close to Moho, actually. That's not bad at all. So we're going to go ahead and set this as our target. And we're going to choose this node. Negative 6.9a. So let's go ahead and maybe do this. Okay, we're a little bit too high. Bring it down, bring it down. Because I'm pretty sure we're going to come around this way, right? I don't know. Maybe I should have checked that. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to do. Because we're going against... The uh, flow of the planets, actually, because I wanted to lower my PE into the range of Moho. So, we are going opposite of the planets, which is sort of strange and new, actually. Why? Oh, no, we're not. Uh, never mind. Okay, so we're not going opposite of the planets. Kerbin has way too much velocity for me to cancel it all out. But we did lower our velocity so that we get down here closer to Moho. 
So we're just going to go ahead and spin around. Did we get that down? We did. All right. Man, Kerbal is bright. We do not have an estimation on how long this burn is going to take. That makes me very upset, actually. Um, can I... Hello? SAS? There we go. Okay, and we can actually move this ship, so let's see if we can find... Where's our maneuver node? There it is. Yeah. Okay, so, because this is probably not very interesting, we're going to be right back when we're actually in time for our burn. I will see you in just a few seconds. Hello everyone, and we're back. So I decided to do things a little bit differently. I'm using time acceleration right now to... Before I align my ship, I'm going to bring in this AP a little bit, because Moho doesn't have an atmosphere, so we can't aero break. Because although aero breaking is fun, without an atmosphere, you can't really do it. So we're going to try to bring in this AP quite a bit first. And then I think it'll be cheaper to change the, uh, the plane that we're in. So we're going to try to do that while we're waiting for this ridiculously long burn to go, even though we're using time acceleration. I wanted to talk about something that's happening in Kerbal Space Program news right now. If any of you use Reddit, which... In my personal opinion, I think you should, because I think Reddit is pretty cool. Bit of uh, a jerk at times, but, you know, Reddit's generally sort of a cool guy. So, anyway, if you use that website, Reddit, you'll probably notice recently in the Kerbal Space Program subreddit that lots of drama has been happening, and this drama is directed mostly at the phrase all future updates for free. As most of you probably know, there has been a promise that if you buy a Kerbal Space Program, then you will get all future updates for free following the Mojang, Mojang, whatever you want to call it, Minecraft funding method, basically. And the problem was, was that during a live stream, one of the developers offhandedly mentioned the idea of paid expansion packs. Now, expansion packs, of course, are quite different from DLC, and are very different from the idea of nickel and diming people on DLC, like, say, <coughs> EA <coughs> does. However, due to what this developer said, a lot of people freaked out and thought that Squad had lost their priorities and was going to nickel and dime everyone with, like, pay $5 to keep your Kerbal alive. Now, personally, I think that those people are idiots, because clearly Squad wouldn't do that. However, what I thought was what I heard, <laughs> was that we're thinking about paid expansion packs in the future. Now, the thing about that is that personally, I feel if, you know, you said that from the beginning, that that's no problem. Of course, like, you have every right to do that. And indeed, if you change the wording on the website and change your promise to future buyers, then that would be okay as well. I have no problem with paying for expansion packs if I think they're worth it. And I also love Squad and I want to support them. However, the way that things worked out was that people freaked out way too much, and they said basically like Squad has lost their minds or whatever, and then one of the community representatives or whatever of Squad, his name is Skunk Monkey on Reddit, he basically had no idea what was going on and felt the need to basically just make up stuff and try to support a statement that he didn't hear himself and he had not talked to this developer. So basically he just made everything worse, made everyone feel like, uh, squad like hates us, etc, etc. And hang on just a moment, I'm gonna pop these out as soon as they run out of fuel. But uh, yes, so all of that was going on. And basically what it ended up boiling down to is that lots of people were upset, lots of drama happened. And in the end, what ended up needing to happen was that the devs came forward and they said, all right, guys, so we know that some of you interpreted the all updates for free thing to mean expansion packs. We originally did not mean that. We meant all content updates up until version 1.0, and then expansion packs would be paid in the future. However, we understand that many of you thought that. So we are going to make for alpha purchasers who have already bought the game and those who buy the game before... Uh, what, May 1st, so up until the end of April, those who buy it, you will have all future expansion packs also free of charge because, you know, you gave us risk-free capital to invest and, like, use to build our game. So actually, the alpha purchasers are the people who made it possible in the first place. So they didn't have to do that, of course, but if they hadn't, there would have been a lot of bad 
publicity. Like, basically, there's already been a lot of bad publicity and a lot of people were freaking out. So, in the end, everyone decided that, oh, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to go ahead and get these free expansion packs, which, for me personally, if an expansion pack comes out, I'm going to buy a new copy of the game every single time and give it to friends, because, you know, Kerbal Space Program is awesome. But I, I support Squad in this decision because I, I myself thought that that meant expansion packs as well on the website and the promises that were given about the development of the game and a lot of the things that they talked about in terms of development those things were you know being done and we thought they were going to be part of the main game and putting them in an expansion pack was sort of disappointing so i'm glad that things went out this way it's true that squad is probably going to miss out on some money but i think that that's sort of a necessary thing considering the language that they used and the ambiguity of it all but of course i'm going to continue supporting squad because since they did this They've regained my trust, and I'm not worried at all about any of that stuff. So, that's what's been going on in the world of Kerbal Space Program news recently. We are almost done with this absurdly long... This absurdly long burn. Indeed, this episode is going to be a little bit longer than usual. If if you guys enjoy Kurt J. Mac, Kurt J. Mac usually does 30 to 45 minute episodes, then maybe, maybe you're going to enjoy this episode, except that, you know, we're not doing anything particularly interesting now except burning. But yeah, so that's what's been going on lately in Kerbal Space Program news. I think I'm going to do another cut right about now so that I can try to line up and get us an intercept, and I will be back when we get an intercept. Be back in a few. Hello everyone, and we're back. And I do indeed have a Moho Intercept, although, to be honest, I'm sort of a little bit low on fuel. Well, not low on fuel, but lower than I thought we would be, so... I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that. But, oh well, there's there's not much we can really do about it now, is there? So, <laughs> we're, we're just gonna... yeah. I set up my PE to be approximately where our Willman is in orbit. Let me go ahead and slow this down. Zoom in. Oh, our PE is... Wow, our... That's not the correct looking orbit at all, in fact. That's that's not good. Let's, let's fix that. Uh, how can we fix that? Uh, add a maneuver. Uh, why is this giant yellow line in my way? I want you to go away so I can't see you. Alright. How to fix this? How to fix this? Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. That... That's going to be very costly, actually. Um... Wow, we, we may not be able to do this, actually. <laughs> Hang, hang on here. Let's let's get rid of this. Come on, let's go out. Let's try to do something else. Bloop. Wow, that does that put us through the planet? Yes, it does. Okay, so I think I think there's something wrong with that. I I don't I don't think that's how orbits work. Actually, oh, maybe they do. Actually, maybe. Uh, all right. So when we're close like that, maybe. Yeah. Okay. There we go. There we go. So we can spin this this way. Wow. This is so expensive. So much fuel. Okay. I guess we should set this as our target now, huh? All right. And... Hmm... Come on. Close the orbit. Close the orbit. Whoa. Whoa, what the heck is this? This is strange and unusual. And I don't like it one bit. don't understand. What the heck? What is this? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so you you guys, I, I'm just going to I'm going to fix this on my own and we'll be back again. 
Hello everyone, and we're back. I figured out exactly what was wrong when we came in, alright? So, when I was changing the orbits and stuff, I realized that the reason it said our degree, our plane was off by like 170 was because basically we were going in the exact opposite direction of Wilmanship, like we would have crashed into each other if I had lined this up correctly. So rather than do that, I had to spin the orbit all the way around Moho. Which only actually took about 400 delta V. We're we're seriously low on fuel. I'm a little bit worried about this, but uh, but but we do have a somewhat close intercept. This is as close as I was able to get 400 and one kilometers. Yeah, so that's not actually that close. But but I think I think it'll be fine. So we're we're just gonna go forward. And once we get to this intercept, I'm going to burn in the opposite direction of my target, or the target's velocity, whatever that's called, I don't know. Just switch this little thing to target and then go in the opposite direction, and you should slow down your speed relative to your target, and then you should be able to get to your target. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I've, uh, I've never done a rendezvous from more than, like, five kilometers away, so... We're, we're gonna see if we can pull that off. I actually have no idea if it's possible or not. <laughs> Anything is possible if you try, everyone. Alright, so we are now there, supposedly at our intercept, and we are getting further and further away each intercept, so we're gonna... Yes, 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 very nice. Uh, are we... are we still... okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually know what's going on, but okay, hello. This is our little probe core. It's doing good. Alright, so we want to get this down to zero so we're not moving relative to our target, which is Wilmanship. Then once that gets down to zero, we should be able to burn in the direction of Wilmanship and go straight towards it. Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. There. There we go. We should be in exactly the same orbit, although I have no idea. No... Okay, so that's the opposite of where our target is pointed, where our target is. Over here? Yes, okay, so I think... I think, now that we're in the exact same orbit as our target, I think we can do this. Maybe. Perhaps. Maybe? Yes? I can't see where the target is yet, but I'm going to assume that we're moving towards it. <laughs> Maybe. Uh... I have no idea what any of this means. What is this? I don't know. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, at least we're heading towards our target, right? Right. I don't know. Can, can we figure out what the separation is? The, it, this... Oh, why is everything freaking out? It looks like we're getting closer to it. Maybe? I don't know. Stinking intersect, go away. Um... Alright, as long as we're moving towards it, let's go ahead and use Time Warp, I guess? I don't, I don't really know. RCS would have made this a lot easier, I think. Are we indeed moving towards the ship? Yeah, but this isn't going to work because we're going to split off. What is this? Only 80 kilometers. I guess that's good. Maybe? It's, it's... Oh, Sai, this this is this is not that great. This is terrible. Oh, I'm so bad at rendezvousing. Why? <laughs> right, it's it's fine. We'll just just go all the way over here to the 81, right? Well, don't want to go too fast. Let's let's use these little buttons. And once we're at 80, let's do the... 
Backwards burn yet again. Yeah, backwards burn. It's official jargon. Official jargon, of course. Let's see, how close are we? 80 kilometers. That's, that's pretty depressing, actually, that that's as close as we can get at the moment. But I have faith. All right, let's go ahead and hit that. Come on. Come on. Hit it. Pretty sure we hit it, right? Sure, why not? Okay, and change this back to target, please. Would like to go around and kill off our difference in speed. Since we are now relatively close. Stop, stop, stop. No, go back, go back. Yes, there we go. Go down to zero. Come on, come on. There. So that's at zero now. We should be staying approximately 80 kilometers from it the entire time, I assume. And now let's burn towards it. Is that going to get us any closer? Is this 30 kilometers? Huh. All right, well, it, it looks like we can indeed continue doing this. I guess it would be easier if I had RCS, but we do not have RCS. So we're just going to continue doing this slowly until we make our way around. And... Eh. Okay, so this is definitely an unorthodox tutorial in how to uh, how to rendezvous. We're already over 20 minutes. I think this is going to be like a 40 minute episode or something like that. You know what? Actually, I'll I'll cut it as soon as we get Wilman into this ship. That's what I'll do. Yeah. We can do the next part next time. Oh, sigh. So the reason I didn't show you launching this ship, by the way, this ship only gets into orbit maybe like one out of six times. That's that's just how terrible this uh, ship design is. In terms of, uh, we need to cut off our velocity, relative velocity, sure. Come back. Okay, well then, there we go, and let's go ahead and try to go towards our target again. Huh, six kilometers, nice! All right. Well, we totally know what we're doing at this point, we're just gonna... You know, s spend a little time going towards it, and then spend a little time going away from it. Eventually, eventually we'll catch up. <laughs> this is this is what you do when all else fails, ladies and gentlemen. If you attempt a rendezvous with Wilman Kerman, approximately six million meters from Moho. Sigh. Now oh, we're definitely getting closer. That's nice. And now that we're under ten, I'm pretty sure that we can. Do this the old-fashioned way. Of course, the velocity target is all the way over here. I don't know what to call these these reticles, radicals, what are they? Like prograde and retrograde, but is that only for orbits? Can we call it prograde, retrograde in terms of going towards the target? I actually have no idea. There we go. And let's go back in... Ah, there we go. Hello. Oh, Wilman, I think I think you've been in here for like a decade, at least. So let's, let's go ahead and make our way towards Genesis 1, the failed launch. One of our few failed launches, actually. Well, if it gets into orbit, generally everything, everything will be okay. But, uh... 
Yes. This is one of the few things that's gotten into orbit. But after it got into orbit, you know, it just it ran out of fuel. Sort of a sad time. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. And we're going to come back in a few seconds when we're actually semi-close to this. Alright, so we'll be right back. Hello everyone, and look what I found! It's Genesis 1! And Moho! Ooh, rendezvous worked! Sort of, I mean, close enough, why not? Alright, so... This is our new ship with the pod, the rescue ship. This is Genesis 1 without any fuel whatsoever. Let's go over and check it, actually. So here's Wilman Kerman. Here's his very small, useless bit of fuel. He also has a parachute, but he's never going to use it, so... Let's get Wilman Kerman out on EVA. Let's get him to let go. Uses... What is this? RCS? Personal RCS? I don't even know what to call this. Alright, so let's go ahead and zoom in. Wilman, you're going home, man. You are so going home. If, uh... Assuming, of course, that we can get you close enough to get inside. It's all right. It's all. It's all right. We got this. Don't. Don't freak out, man. We're good. Just gonna get you in here, and this will no longer be a probe only capsule. We will also have Wilman Kerman at the controls, and Wilman, he's he's been on his mission for like a decade or two. So I have I have absolutely no problems with him taking control. I'm sure that he's a very amazing pilot. Grab and board. And there we go. We have transferred Wilman Kermit over to our rescue ship, and we will see next time about getting him back home. So, wow. I'm I'm amazed I was able to do that. <laughs> oh, thank you very... Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. This was a lot of fun. My name is Magnius, and look forward to the next episode when we try to get Wilman Kermit home. I will see you next time.